presentation today. Uh, as Ryan mentioned, I am much more uh, used to talking to people in person and getting to see everyone's faces and having more of an interactive type of conversation rather than just me being a talking head for an hour. But um, I would like to do a little bit more at the end of a more interactive, you know, back and forth uh, with questions and stuff like that if we can. But as Ryan mentioned, if you do have questions throughout the presentation about a specific slide or something specific that I'm, I'm speaking about, um, Ryan will be monitoring the, the chat. I won't be able to see the chat uh, while I'm presenting, but he's going to monitor that. So if you have any uh, pressing questions, uh, feel free to, to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and get started here. So thank you um, to the Grimsby Library for having me and for the folks that joined us this morning. Um, so just a little bit of an outline of our presentation today. I'm going to um, introduce myself and a little bit of background about me. Um, who is the NPCA and what do we do? some of the recreational opportunities, um, some of the really uh, outstanding natural heritage features that we have here in this area and some volunteer and partnership opportunities. So a little bit about myself. Um, I uh, graduated from Niagara College's Ecosystem Restoration Program and from Brock University with um, a Bachelor of Environmental Science and started working with the Conservation Authority as a summer student in 2007 and stayed in the restoration program up until 2014. In 2014, I changed roles and am now in my current role here um, doing community outreach. So my role is to be a liaison between the NPCA, community groups, volunteers, partners, things like that. I sit on advisory committees on behalf of the NPCA, attend community events, attend partner meetings and information sessions. And I lead some of our community outreach programs, including the Yellowfish Road program and our Mickey DeFrugio Legacy Pollinator project. So who is the NPCA? So we were established in 1959 under the Conservation Authorities Act. We have a watershed that is roughly 2,500 square kilometers, um, serving approximately 500,000 people. We're governed by a board of directors and we pr are primarily funded by municipal tax levies from Niagara, Hamilton and Haldeman, though we do get some provincial funding and outside grants and things like that. So as some of you may know, our watershed is not bound by municipal boundaries. We are watershed based as are all the conservation authorities in Ontario. So part of our jurisdiction covers um, a little bit of Hamilton and a little bit of Haldeman. And if you're wondering what, a wa what the heck a watershed is, uh, we're going to talk about that. So basically a watershed is an area of land where all the water um, when it rains flows downward and goes into the, the lowest part, um, a river, a lake, um, and it incorp in, incorporates both above and below ground. So um, in Niagara, we have three uh, watersheds. So one that drains to Lake Ontario, one that drains to the Niagara River, and one that drains to Lake Erie. And then the water in Lake Erie drains into Lake Ontario through the Niagara River. Um, so the NPCA mandate, I, I don't need to uh, read this out loud for all of you, but basically uh, we undertake programs on a watershed basis that further conservation, restoration, development, and management of natural resources. Um, and this can mean many things. Um, so some of the things that we do include managing 41 conservation areas. We do water quality monitoring, flood forecasting and warning, permitting, restoration grant program, fundraising events, educational programs and camps, and working with partners to further common goals. Why do we do this? Uh, for clean water, drinking water, recreational opportunities, healthy ecosystem, to protect species at risk, provide recreation opportunities for the um, community, and because we are provincially mandated to do so. <laughs> Um, so some of the recreational opportunities that exist, we have um, four of our flagship more active parks that are gated um, and that we have staff at always. Um, so Balls Falls Conservation Area, Benbrook Conservation Area, Chippewa Creek Conservation Area, and Long Beach Conservation Area. These are likely the conservation areas that you are familiar with when you think of the NPCA. These are most popular ones. And as some of you may have noticed, many were closed and at capacity at many points during uh, this year. So this is um, an example of our, our more popular 
parks. So this is um, Balls Falls in the photo. So recreational opportunities at some of our passive parks include exploring, hiking, photography, fishing, swimming, reading, biking, family picnics, and nature appreciation. Um, so these are some of the things that people can do when they go out to our parks. Um, and uh, we, we did have to, to push a little bit this year to try and get people to kind of spread out beyond those popular parks and explore some of the little bit lesser known parks because like I mentioned we were at capacity at many of our parks um, this year seemed to be the year that uh, people really needed nature and to get out there and and get out uh, get outside and get some fresh air kids need nature um, now more than ever that right now they've spent so much time um, with online learning and um, just having to stay home uh, and get away and be away from their friends and things like that this year um, and I just really want to point out that outdoor education doesn't just have to be taking a field trip um, with a class um, or taking your family to a trip to Balls Falls for the day. Um, nature's everywhere. It's all around us. So when you're driving, when you're walking in your neighborhood, you know, stop and listen to hear if you can hear some birds around you and, um, you know, check out the trees that are in your neighborhood and look for those little hidden gems. Most uh, municipalities, most communities have these little hidden nature areas nearby that you don't always have to drive to to get to. You just have to go searching for them sometimes. Um, and learning to observe and record the things that are around you. Um, starting a nature journal is something that uh, is, a, is a great concept for kids and adults alike to kind of go out in the different times of the year and see what's growing and what's changing and what's, what's out there in terms of um, birds and things like that. Um, this, the photo here is a picture of um, a morning dove nest uh, that we found in our yard this year. And um, uh, my daughter was just super interested in this this morning dove nest and so it led to a whole research project about morning doves and and how they always typically lay two eggs and how their nests are not the best built nests that you'll find. Um, so, you know, this sort of learning about the things around you that are right in your backyard instead of just always thinking that you need to go out somewhere to, to do a hike or, or to experience nature. Um, I have a little note here about risky play. So um, I've been doing some reading lately and, and chatting with um, some of the folks that work at our Balls Falls site um, in our education programs. And risky play is something that's important for kids and getting out there and climbing the trees and, and um, you know, doing the things that sometimes give us parents a little bit of a, a jolt uh, when we see them doing it. But I read that you should always wait about 10 or 15 seconds before you tell your kids to stop doing something unless, of course, it's, you know, very dangerous. Um, but, but let them, you know, try to climb the tree. Let them, you know, get out there and walk across a log or, or you know, do something that you, you might feel is a little bit risky, but it, it gives them confidence to know that it's something that they can do. And that's okay. Um, and as I mentioned before, go beyond the public park. Look for those little hidden nature gems uh, in your in your neighborhood. Uh, do note that you should always uh, make sure that it's not private property. That that you know there's not those no trespassing signs and things like that. Um, one really good uh, way to find these little hidden gems is to speak with a local nature club or conservation um, authority um, or one of the friends of groups because they often know the best places to go in the neighborhood. So kids aren't the only ones um, that need nature. We, we all need nature. So things that are scientifically proven reasons um, that we need to get outside include the improvement of short-term memory, restored mental energy, stress relief, um, better vision. Um, when you're staring at a screen all day, your eyes aren't getting any exercise at all. When you get outside, your eyes are constantly focusing, just like the lens of a camera, changing focus depending on the depth that you're looking at. And so that is sort of a way of exercising your eyes. Um, too many of us spend way too many hours in front of a computer screen or in front of, in front of uh, electronics every day. So this is something that we really need to do better. Um, more creativity, it's better for your immune system, um, and that mental health aspect is super important as I think many people realize this year. Um, so some of our 
parks that I, I mentioned are very well known, Balls Falls Conservation Area. Um, and I should point out um, that, you know, some people have been noting lately that there's no water going over the falls. And this is typical um, this time of the year. If you would like to see uh, water going over the falls, your best bet is to go in the spring. <laughs> Um, this time of year we often have very dry you know trickles going down the falls and so it, you don't get that spectacular view that you do in the spring. Um, some of these photos are from our um, annual Balls Falls Thanksgiving Festival which this year is not happening the way it normally does and it's more of a virtual online uh, vendor sales and things like that but our Heritage Village is open and we're doing ticketed tours of our the Heritage Village here at Balls Falls. We do weddings and corporate events up at the Center for Conservation and in the, um, the barn at Balls Falls. And we have um, educational camps and uh, programs that run. Um, we are guessing that we're not gonna get too many kids coming through the educational programs this year. Many schools have um, stopped doing field trips so far, but uh, we, do, we did have a, a camp running this summer and uh, en engaging kids in learning outdoors and most of their time at camp is spent outdoors. Um, and they learn about the local environment, the ecology, they learn things like survival skills and fire building and stuff like that. And then also, um, information about the heritage of our site. Binbrook Conservation Area is uh, a conservation area that if you're looking for a little bit more active recreation, um, there are lots of opportunities there, um, obviously depending on the time of year. Um, but we do have uh, treetop trekking there, has, has been there for the last couple of years, and uh, wakeboarding, and uh, this fun splash um, that was in the in the lake. Um, if you're looking for more passive recreation at Pinbrook, I suggest the Tyneside, the Tyneside Trail. So Tyneside Trail is uh, maintained completely by a volunteer group called the Glenbrook Conservation Committee. And we are just out at Pinbrook this Saturday planting some trees in a newly acquired parcel of land that was previously farmland. And the GCC is very, very active and have been advocating for um, this, this type of thing for many, many years. And so we, we planted some 300 trees there um, through a TD grant that was acquired by Earth Day Hamilton Burlington on Saturday. So 300 trees got a new home and uh, the Glanbrook Conservation Committee are quite happy to uh, see this addition to Binbrook. Long Beach and Chippewa Creek are the conservation areas where you can have um, camping opportunities. So we, we have both um, electrical sites and um, more passive camping with tent camping and the, the non-service sites. Um, so those are two local opportunities for, for camping if people are looking to get out one more time before the, uh, the end of the season. Again, uh, Long Beach was very popular this summer, so we did have to close it a few days um, because we are over capacity as it did ha does have access to, uh, to Lake Erie. So natural heritage in our backyard. Um, we are so, so lucky to live where we live. We have so many amazing natural heritage features here that I could go on and on and on about it. Um, this is a, a map of our conservation areas, um, the little green, dots are all the, of our conservation areas. And I just wanted to point out a few that are, um, you know, everybody, not everybody, but most people have heard of Balls Falls and Rockway um, and Long Beach. Um, but some of the more lesser known ones, uh, Rug Rock Track is a lovely little area, the Headley Forest um, over here in Haldimand. Mountain View is a nice escarpment property, so is Cave Springs. Um, as well as Louth, which is in between Balls Falls and Rockway, and it's not as popular. So if you're driving to Balls Falls or Rockway on a Saturday and you find that those parks are pretty full or, or at capacity or the parking lots are full, um, drive over to Louth. It's beautiful and, and has some lovely trails as well. Um, E.C. Brown Conservation Area along the Welland River is an area where we've done a wetland restoration project, um, and it has some nice walking trails through there. So just kind of thinking a little bit uh, beyond some of the, the parks that you would normally visit. But this is um, the natural heritage um, conservation areas that are uh, managed by the Conservation Authority, but certainly there are many more natural heritage areas in Niagara. Um, so that these little gems of nature can be found anywhere. Um, 
most municipalities have these lovely little um, trails and parks. So the Shag Bark Trail is an example in Fort Erie. Malcolmson Eco Park in St. Catharines is a beautiful area and there's a very active volunteer group that maintains that property in collaboration with the City of St. Catharines. The Lathrop Nature Preserve in Pelham is owned by the Nature Conservancy of Canada and it is a beautiful, beautiful spot to go for a hike, um, especially in the fall when all the trees are changing. Um, there's lots of Carolinian species in that forest. So if you're looking at to go find sassafras and tulip trees, that's a really lovely place to check out. Uh, Louth Conservation Area I mentioned before. Um, Mud Lake in Port Coburn is another nice one, especially in the fall. Just be careful. Um, or be aware that when you go there, there are hunting opportunities there as well. So just um, be mindful of hunting seasons and things like that. Uh, Morgan's Point in Wayne Fleet. This is a really nice gem, I, I should say. This one is along the shores of Lake Erie again. Um, it's a lesser known park, but it's beautiful. And uh, like I said, it has lakefront access and um, there's a nice pollinator garden there that's maintained by some of the local volunteers and uh, it's just a really really nice place to visit and go for a walk. And Baden-Powell Park in Niagara Falls is another one that's uh, kind of not as well known but that has had some really interesting restoration work done um, there over the years and it's a it's a nice area to get out of the city and go for a walk. So the city of Hamilton and the Niagara region have over 100 waterfalls and cascades. And as I mentioned, if you're looking for those things, the spring is the time to go. This, this time of year, you might not see uh, much going on. The Niagara Escarpment is uh, UNESCO designated. It's a huge, um, a huge natural heritage feature here in Niagara. It's home to many species at risk and, and unique species to this area. The Bruce Trail System is another um, unique thing about uh, the Niagara area and our, our watershed here. Um, the Carolinian life zone, so this bottom map, um, the green area is the Carolinian life zone and this is an area that has really unique species um, in Ontario. It's one of the most the most southern part of Ontario um, and it, it's home to species that you don't find anywhere else in Canada um, that are typical of the Carolinas. So you get those sassafras and the tulip trees and the sh um, the um, flying squirrels and things like that. So 125 species in Carolina and Canada have species at risk status. Over 400 species in Carolina and Canada are considered rare. Um, the other unique thing about this area is that there's such a wide variety of different ecosystems and we learned this through our natural areas inventory project a few years ago. Um, we get beach and forest and swamp and meadow and alvars and open marshes um, and you get to really see this interaction between people and nature in a way that um, shows that it, we can do this together. Um, that we have agriculture here, we have areas that are more urban and more rural and um, you know you can drive 20 minutes and see three or four different types of ecosystems which is pretty unique I think. Um, the Niagara River, the Welland River and Niagara Falls are of course some of those those natural heritage features. I mean Niagara Falls is um, something everybody's aware of um, but the importance of the Niagara River and the Welland River um, historically are, are hugely important here. And 12 Mile Creek, which is the only cold water stream here in this area, which supports populations of the, um, the endangered brook trout. And uh, that's another unique feature here. So this is a map showing the Niagara Escarpment. So many people know that the Niagara Escarpment is here, but a lot of people don't realize just how long it actually is. So uh, it starts in um, in the U.S. and runs all the way up into Tobermory and then continues along around Lake Michigan. So it's a huge, huge natural heritage feature. And then we have the Bruce Trail, which runs um, 890 kilometers long and runs all the way from um, from here to Tobermory as well. And so this is um, a trail that is maintained solely by volunteers and there's 400 kilometers of side trails as well. So um, in the, the photo on the bottom here you see the white and the blue um, marks that are on the trees and that helps you uh, know 
which trail you're on. So the white trails are the main trails and the blue trails are the, um, the side trails. And the Bruce Trail Conservancy has great maps on their site if you're ever looking to um, hike a part of the trail. They have a badge system where you're, um, depending on which parts of the trail you hike, you can get different badges and things like that. So it's a great, great thing to do with a family or, or on your own. Um, the Niagara River, I mean, this photo speaks for itself. Such a beautiful area. The water is amazing and the um, so many unique species and, and um, natural heritage features here with the geology of the rocks and um, all the all the history here. The Niagara Peninsula Aspiring Global Geopark. So there is a, an active group here in Niagara um, that is working to get the this area um, designated as a global geopark through UNESCO, similar to the designation that we have for the Niagara Escarpment. Um, the name Niagara has indigenous provenance um, and the Niagara Peninsula has been home from time immemorial to many indigenous nations and continues to this day to be an iconic gathering place visited by people from nations around the world. Um, so geoparks are designated um, for areas that have um, geological significance as well as a marrying between uh, humans and the natural world where things are um, so things like tourism and ecotourism things like that are, are really important in a geopark and so this group is um, actively working to to get Niagara designated as a geopark um, and um, and they're getting there. <laughs> we're, uh, we're in the application process and um, so right now they're, we're considered an aspiring global geopark and there's some information there if anybody's looking to get more, um, more information about that particular aspect. Um, so this again just shows the uniqueness of the Niagara area and how lucky we are to have these things right in our backyard. Um, volunteering is a great way to connect with nature, um, especially if you're somebody who's not yet comfortable with, uh, with nature, like with, you know, not comfortable going out on a hike by yourself or um, not comfortable taking your family or something like that. Um, it's a good way to get out there and um, connect a little bit and, and gain some experience from those around you. Um, often when you're out at a tree planting or something like that, you can connect with some of the local nature groups groups and community groups that can uh, help you build a little bit more of that confidence and uh, expand your connections. Um, there are many options for volunteering with nature. Um, so some of the Friends of groups that I mentioned, um, the Friends of Malcolmson Park, the Friends of Walker's Creek, um, Trout Unlimited, there's many, many community group options here in Niagara. We have a lot of uh, nature clubs, both in Niagara and in Hamilton. Um, and Haldeman that are um, always looking for new members and often they plan hikes and speaking um, engagements and things like that so you can go and learn from people that have been doing this for many many years. Um, we do typically have um, volunteering options with the NPCA and even corporate groups so this picture was just taken um, a couple of Fridays ago, this is Aviva Insurance came out and they did some maintenance on a pollinator garden at one of our conservation areas as part of a corporate team building volunteer day. So lots of different options. And these are just examples of some of the volunteer opportunities that we have um, at our various conservation areas. And, you know, many of these are taken from a year in which we did not have COVID. Um, so the volunteer opportunities were a little bit more expanded than they are this year. However, um, anything from the heritage tours um, at Balls Falls to volunteering at community events. Uh, this is Andy from the Glambrook Conservation Committee um, that does volunteer work at Binbrook. As I mentioned, they do work to improve habitat and maintain the trails. Um, again, this is the Glanbrook Conservation Committee um, maintaining some trails. We've got tree planting with scouts. Um, these two gentlemen down here, I believe Howie is maybe here in this presentation this morning. This is Howie and Mark, um, who did a lot of work maintaining and building, um, fixing the bridges on some of our trails at Balls Falls. They've done a tremendous amount of work at Balls Falls in the last few years, um, just helping with any projects around the park. 
And uh, then we also have some ecological monitoring type of volunteering opportunities. So this is um, Dara and Steve who've been monitoring the wood duck boxes out at Mud Lake for many, many, many years, even before my time at the NPCA. This is a group for um, Yellowfish Road where they go out and paint yellow fish next to storm drains with the words rainwater only. This is a Trout Unlimited um, program that is run Canada wide. We are the local coordinators here in Niagara, but they, um, they, they do these projects all over. So that is uh, a very fast uh, version of my presentation. I'm used to having, like I said, a more interactive conversation. Um, so I'm happy to take any questions or comments or um, if anybody has any anything from the chat. Brian? Oh yes, uh, Carrie, you can uh, check There's the chat if you want. There's a, a question from uh, Ian Lucas. Um, so I don't know if, if you want to open the chat or I could read it out loud to you. So, um, I, uh, I'm trying to see what, I don't see anything in the chat except for the one that you. Oh yeah, I think, I think actually I noticed Ian uh, just sent it to me. Um, oh, okay. So I'll, I'll read it, I'll read it out loud here. Um, sure. So Ian's question is, uh, could you please elaborate on the difference between a UNESCO Global Geopark and the UNESCO Niagara Escarpment Biosphere Reserve. <laughs> Ian, I might throw that back at you. Um, so the um, the UNESCO. So this is going to stump me a little bit. The UNESCO um, Global Geopark is a a designation that is specific to um, tourism and. Um, and ecotourism in particular, and the significance of the geology of the area. The UNESCO Biosphere Reserve is um, a place where um, humans and the environment uh, interact in a way um, where there's a significant environmental um, feature, such as the Niagara Escarpment. I think that's right. Ian, you can correct me and turn on your microphone if I've got that wrong. <laughs> Hi, Carrie. Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, the the um, I think that the big difference in in that's important to, to um, talk about is there are restrictions on development within a biosphere, um, whereas in a geopark there are no restrictions on development, um, but there's an encouragement towards sustainable um, tourism based on uh, based on the ecology, based on the geology, the history, indigenous history in particular. So it's it's quite a bit different, but some sometimes if you people tend to sort of lump them together, so they'll say, oh, you know, oh, well, it's you know, there's a biosphere reserve, and we're also going to get a UNESCO Global Geopark, as if it's the same thing, but they're they're quite different, really. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for clearing that up. <laughs> Are there any other questions? Um, I'm not sure how. Um, how this works, but if, if people wanted to turn off their or turn on their mic and ask a question or, or put them in the chat, that's that's fine with me as well. Um, or I'm interested to know if people that are on the, the call can share about um, maybe like a hidden nature gem that they know of in their area that um, you know that's that's open to the public that people can can visit. I know one um, in, I live in Welland and in the municipality of Welland we have the Woodlawn Park that they create a little ice rink in every every year in the winter and I think it's um, it's lovely to be able to go out and skate uh, in a forest in, in the middle of winter so that's kind of a little uh, thing that not a lot of people know about unless they live in Welland. Um, yeah, so people can feel free to turn on their uh, their microphone or their video if they want. Uh, oh, I see George has raised his hand. Um, so maybe, um, George, if you wanted to uh, ask a question, go, go ahead. I will. Thank you. Uh, Kerry, uh, nice presentation. Um, you talk about hidden gems and so on. The salmon fish will start running in a couple of weeks, too. I don't know. I, you didn't touch on that. So I, I would think that probably 99% of people that live in Niagara have no clue to go and watch the salmon as they go and spawn, lay their eggs. So just a thought, we go up just below Balls Falls, we take the entranceway as part of the Bruce Trail, 
And it's just really neat to see hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of salmon. They're probably about a third of a meter long. They go up there, lay their eggs, and of course they die on the way back. Right. That's amazing. Thank you. That's, that's a great thing to point out this time of year for sure. Thank you. Is this, um, uh, Bill Octoloni here, is, is this uh, presentation available um, yeah. to review after t this morning? Um, like to sh like, is it going to be available to share? Well, just I'd like to go over it a couple of more times. Oh, sure. Really. Sorry. I think it's an excellent presentation. Oh, thank and you. There's so much in it. I just would like to go through it a few more times just to make sure that I'm a little more cognizant of what's there. For sure. Um, I, I don't think there'll be any issue with me um, putting it into a PDF and sharing it with the participants if, um, if Ryan has everybody's contact information or if or if you want to just send me an email and I'll send you the PDF, um, that's fine too. Whatever's easiest uh, for everybody. But thank you. Thank you. Thank and you. Carrie, with, with your permission, um, we could also post it on the Grimsby Library YouTube channel. Um, but but that's up to you. We could talk about that later. But um, sure, that, I'll that's just have. Option for I'll have to, to check. It. I don't I don't think there'll be any issues with that. But I just would have to check okay. first. Sure. So there's a couple other questions uh, in the chat and it looks like they would be ones you, you could see yourself. I can see them now. Um, okay. Sir. One from oh, Car Carla. Carla and from Hi, Carla. Um, how can I become involved? So I'm assuming she's um, maybe speaking to um, the Geopark. Yeah. Carla, are you? Hi, Carla. Hi. Long time no see. I know, eh? Well, now I see you now. <laughs> um, so I would, uh, I would think that there's certainly, uh, I, I, have you been connected at all with the Geopark yet? Well, I've been to tourism meetings going back many years, but nothing's ever connected. I, so no, not really. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm happy to put you in touch with the folks from the Geopark. I think Ian's on this call and uh, maybe Darren as well. Um, so that's certainly something that, uh, that we should uh, we should explore further, um, and uh, I, you know we've had chats before about um, some of the aspects about the um, the conservation areas and tours and things like that. So certainly there's um, further conversations to have there. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, and then someone else, Lorenzo. Hi, Lorenzo. Asked, does the NPC have a working relationship with Tourism Niagara? Uh, I believe we do. Um, it's not myself that's um that's connected but i know that we have a staff uh, member that is a board member on the 20 valley tourism association and i believe she is also connected with tourism niagara but i could double check that um do you have a specific connect connection there lorenzo someone we should touch base with oh is lorenzo sorry still? no oh. i no, I didn't have a specific, I was just curious whether you had a, an MOU or some kind of, you know, relationship with Tourism Niagara. Yeah, um, I will, I, I will look like into. It sounds like you do, it's just. I think we do. I think um, we've been part of, um, there's a new group that's a, like a tourism task force type of um, group that uh, has been connecting every week for the last little while. So I believe there are some connections there. Nice. Thank you. Thanks. Um, and then just somebody else asked about the presentation and thank you, Ian, because you said you could uh, connect directly with Carla. So thank you for that. Any other questions? Sorry, I, I may have gone through it really quickly. I, I'm used to, like I said, having more of a back and forth conversation. <laughs> so if I was talking too fast, I apologize. Uh, Tom no, has a question no, it was great. about the watershed areas. Yes, Tom. Hi, Carrie. Uh, can you hear me? Hi, Tom. Yep. Um, so my question is, um, uh, I was, uh, I'm surprised that it goes well beyond the uh, borders of the Niagara region and into other um, region, regional areas. But uh, what struck me in that one visual that you, uh, that you provided was that 
There's a large uh, section of the watershed flows to Lake Ontario. That makes sense to me. And another m larger portion goes to um, the Niagara River, mm -hmm. which surprised me. And it's also surprised me that there's such a small area that goes to Lake Erie. <laughs> and of course, that must have to do with the geography of the area and lower areas versus That's higher. That's right. Areas. It's all, yeah, topographical and... Um and just you know the slope of the land and all that sort of thing so the the area in the middle uh flows to the the welland river and then the welland river takes the water to the niagara river that's pretty that's interesting for me too because i'm i'm right next to the welland river here in uh, oh welland. excellent yeah. yeah thank you thank you did you want me to pull that slide back up tom sure um whatever you know know what i'm talking about yeah, that's that was an one of the old, first, first we've ones. had this, this map for a long time and it, uh, I always like it. It's a good visual for people. So that's so how that. How far back does the Welland River go? Uh, so when we were in Binbrook, so Tom was one of the volunteers that helped us plant trees on Saturday. Uh, when we were in Binbrook on Saturday, this is uh, Lake Neopanko here in, in Binbrook. So the Welland River starts just, um, just west of that. So I read something about Lake Neopinko that was, it's a, it was created mm -hmm. uh, on one end to help uh, control the flow of water in the Welland River. Yeah, so there's, there's a dam there in Binbrook. Yep. And so it's a man-made lake. It's not a natural lake. Right. And how does that control or help control <laughs> the flow of the Welland River? Um, you oh, are asking the wrong person. I, um, I would be <laughs> too happy to put you in touch with some of our, um, our staff that are the ones that are more responsible for the dam. I, um, I'm not sure what they use as a gauge of when the dam is, uh, like what, what the water levels are and things like that. Um, I, I would have to ask one of our, um, our yeah, more technical fine. engineering type staff. Sorry about that. Do you know how old that lake is? when when it was created uh i should know that off the top of my head uh it was probably in the early days of the conservation authorities probably in the, Back in the 50s or late early 60s yeah something like that yeah okay thank you and thanks for the uh we had a great time at the tree planting oh. everyone do it <laughs> great i'm glad that uh we got those trees in the ground any Kim? other question yep this is carla Hi, um, Carla. The other day I did a tour for the Willow Bank School of Restoration. Yes. And there was a young fellow who told me a few stories. He lives in West Lincoln. He, he talked about that dam, and I didn't understand what he was saying. Um, he talked about Binbrook, a dam, something to do with the uh, Welland River and the Niagara River. So now I can see what he was talking about. Oh, okay. <laughs> but he said that the regulation of it is such that when people who are employees um, move the dam the way they need, like open and shut the dam the way they need to, that it floods the farmer's field so badly that the farmers are very unhappy and that people literally skate in the winter on these flooded fields because of um, all this water being gushed across the land. Anyway, it seems so wrong to me as he said this, it was just, you know, hearsay from him, but he's a local boy that's lived there forever. So I just mm -hmm. thought I should mention that and then maybe somebody could look into it. Thank you. Yeah, that's, again, that's something I don't know a great deal about, but I'd be happy to um, to put you in touch or, or maybe we can connect that individual with the staff um, so that they can voice their concerns uh, with them and see if we can come up with a solution there. Because mm -hmm. that does sound troubling. Yes. Okay. Great. So there's an interesting fact from uh, Ian in the um, the chats. Um, I had never heard of this. The Onondaga escarpment uh, controls the relatively minor flow into Lake Erie as far as watersheds go. So um, yeah, kind of a fun fact there. Yeah, the the Onondaga escarpment is uh, definitely not as well known as the Niagara escarpment. That's for sure, but certainly an important feature there. Um, so if, uh, if no one else has any questions, uh, or feel free to to, um, to get in a last question here before we uh, 
and the presentation. Um, but uh, just in general, I'd like to uh, to thank uh, Carrie for, for doing this presentation online and giving it a go, and uh, everyone else for attending. Uh, it's really nice to make these um, kind of present presentations interactive and, uh, and, and with the questions and everything. Um, so we probably will have a recording um, somewhere, um, if uh, maybe on our YouTube channel. Um, but yeah, it doesn't look like there's any questions. Uh, sure. Comment from nobody's from, willing to share um, their their na their nature gems from their neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> they don't want anybody else to know about them. I get that. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I get that. Excellent. Anyway. Well, thank you. But they they do run. exist in every in every neighborhood. You will find some <clears> sort <throat> of nature trail or something, and and it's. Uh, um, it's it's important to get out and, and know those areas for sure. Truly. Thank you. Thank yeah, you, thanks, everyone. Thanks, everybody. So I guess we'll end the meeting here and uh, have a great day, everybody. And, and thanks again, Carrie, for, uh, for doing this. Bye-bye. So, sign off here.